We're excited to have you this morning. Welcome. It's good to see you this morning. Um, we actually have a quick announcement as we get started. If Debbie, if you want to come up and yes. let us know what is going on. Let you know what's going on. <laughs>
Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O oh Lord, my rock, my redeemer. That is my prayer for us this morning. That as we enter into listening to God's voice, that we would be aware of the world that God set up. That he speaks to us clearly in nature. That you can see that God is not without understanding. That he's not random. But everything is done with precision, with intention. And so as we enter into this service this morning, may this echo back through your mind that God wants to speak to you, and I believe with all my heart that he already has. But as we enter into dialogue with God intentionally, there is so much to be gained. God, I pray that this service would honor you, that you would speak to us, that we would listen. And that we would obey. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing the opening hymn.
children's church. So if you're a kiddo, uh, if you could come this direction and uh, go out uh, to children's church, that would be great. So any kids that are here, uh, I think there's a couple over there too. It'd be great to have you go with Amber and Aon. Let's give Amber and Aon a hand. Whenever we gather, we want to pray together, and we want to lift up praises and concerns to God. So is there anyone who has uh, praises or concerns this morning? Yes, people cleaning up. I've heard more chainsaws in the past few days than for Doug Stuckey, who used his chainsaw at the parsonage. Doug Stuckey. Yes, sir. translate that to order. <laughs> order. Yes. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to bring the Lord into that. Anyone else? Yes. Yesterday was a um, state competition for instrumental, and um, I know Angola and Fremont had quite a few students that went. Chris Adams was one of them, and he brought home the gold. Nice. And um, Amy has, Amy Simons has many good students, and we brought home gold and one silver. And, and um, just thankful that we had a good trip down, a good trip back, good fellowship. Anyone else? All right, let's pray together. God, we thank you that you are the provider, our source, and our redeemer. And we pray for a friend who has an illness. As she lives out her days, may you be with her with her family, that you would give them peace and comfort. We're thankful, we're thankful for the way that you have provided for this community, that you continue to, to help us 
in times where it's sunny, in times where there's cleanup to be done. We thank you that we live in a community that uh, cleans up so quickly. And God, we thank you for individuals who are helping with those efforts, including Doug. We, we praise you for the people willing to go out into the cold and make things look new again. And God, we lift up Julie. I pray that even in the midst of confusion, that you would be with her. And I pray for her her friends and family, as they interact with her, that they would remember the good times. That even when Julie can, that they would remind her of the good times. And God, we thank you that you are a God of order. That you lay things out specifically, intentionally. And we pray that we would be a people of order. We thank you for all the recreations that give us joy and sometimes sorrow when our team loses. God, we praise you for a musical community, both in the church and uh, in the high schools. We thank you for the success that was seen and also for the, the students getting to know each other better, getting to know uh, their facilitators better. We praise you for safe travels. You are amazing, God. <clears throat> Would you join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven,
everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please rise for the scripture reading. Heavenly Father, please open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive your word through this reading and Pastor Tim's message this morning. Today's reading is from Proverbs, verse, um, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 20 through 23. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my word. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, but in Proverbs uh, uh, 
uh, 4.13 in the uh, New Living Translation, it says this, Take hold of my instructions. Don't let go of them. Guard them. They are the key to your life. I was struck by that phrase. Uh, they are the key to your life. And uh, something similar is said in Deuteronomy uh, 3, uh, 19 and 20. But uh, Jesus, quoting Deuteronomy, uh, says this uh, when he is tempted by the enemy. Uh, people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. There is life in God's word. If we are going to experience the abundant life uh, that God has for us, uh, we need to learn to hear God uh, as he speaks to us. Uh, there's probably nothing more important than us learning to hear from God, learning to hear God's voice. Now, I believe that the Bible teaches uh, that God has spoken in the past and that God is still speaking today. God has spoken in the past and he's still speaking today. Uh, anybody know the first time it's mentioned that God uh, spoke in the Bible? Chris? Genesis 1-1. Well, it's not quite Genesis 1-1. It's close. <laughs> You're even closer. <laughs> One, three. Very good, Chris. And it says, I actually thought it was Genesis 1-1 uh, before I looked it up. But it says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. And the light was good. One of the names for Jesus one of his titles is that Jesus is the Word. Okay, it's the light. That Jesus is the Word. The Word. The Word of God. God the Word. And, uh, and so I believe that from Genesis to Revelation, uh, God was speaking uh, to people. Uh, to uh, nations, uh, God was speaking. Uh, can you think of some of those that he spoke to? Who are some that you know that God spoke to in the scriptures? Moses. Moses. And he spoke to Moses out of a burning bush. Who else did he speak to? Spoke to Samuel. Uh, poor old Eli. Uh, Samuel hears the word of God and thinks it's Eli and goes and and, and wakes up Eli from a dead sleep, and Eli's an old guy, you know, and uh, he sends him back, uh, and, and that happens four times, or three times. And then Eli catches on and says, the next time the voice comes, I say, uh, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Uh, who else? Adam. Who? Yeah. Jonah, yeah. The Lord of the Lord actually came a first time and a second time to Jonah. How many are thankful that sometimes God uh, speaks a second time? Yeah. Who else? Adam. Adam? Hey, Adam, where are you? Who else? Jacob. Abraham? Jacob? How about Mary? I spoke to Mary through an angel. How about Saul? on the road to Damascus, gets knocked off of his horse, sees the blinding light, and says, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord answers, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Uh, God speaks. And I believe that the, the experience of God's saints down through the years is that God has not just spoken in biblical times, uh, but God speaks uh, to people um, in everyday lives. And he doesn't just speak to preachers or prophets or Sunday school teachers or evangelists or uh, Mother Teresa or uh, Billy Graham. He speaks to folks like us. God desires to communicate with us. Now, that being 
he said, I believe that God is still speaking, but often we don't recognize it. You know what? <laughs> I believe Stella is speaking. <laughs> hey, Debbie, she's coming this way and you're going that way. Hey, you can go to children's church. Just in time. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think uh, that one of the things that, that we don't realize is how often God is actually speaking to us. How often God is speaking to us. I, Richard Blackaby, who uh, is the son of the guy who... Henry Blackaby, who wrote the Experience in God study. Anybody ever heard of the Experience in God study? It, it, it's a great study. And uh, he, he said that he had an experience where uh, the CEO, uh, uh, this businessman, uh, was talking with him and he said, hey, you know, I, I, I prayed and I prayed to hear from God uh, uh, about this I, you know, I uh, wound up leaving uh, my position, and I uh, was offered this other position. It was a company that didn't quite have my ethical, um, uh, my, my ethical guidelines, but it was a good position, good job, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I didn't get any answer from the Lord, so I went ahead and took it, and it, it wound up a disaster. I left after about six months. Uh, why didn't God speak to me? And Richard said, um, did your wife talk to you about the job that you were taking? What was her opinion? And uh, he said, well, she was against it. And he said, uh, did you ask any of your business friends what they would do? Any of your believing business friends what they would do? And he said, they were against it. They thought it was the wrong move. And he said, did anybody else talk to you about it? And he said, my son talked to me about it. He said, Dad, why would you want to do that? And Richard's response was, you know what? I think God did speak to you. But he spoke to you through those that were closest to you. Actually, sometimes God speaks to me a lot through Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Blackaby also says uh, this. Uh, I've never heard God speak out loud, but I've heard God speak loud and clear. And uh, I, I have never heard the audible voice of God, but uh, I could agree with Richard Blackaby that there are times that I've heard God loud and clear. Loud and clear. Now, uh, some of the reasons that we may not, um, we may blow past uh, the fact that God is speaking to us is uh, a, a thought will come to our mind and we'll think it's just our thought. But uh, often God will uh, put a thought in our mind. Uh, sometimes we think that it's just a friend uh, talking to us or it's just our spouse or it's just our uh, parents or it's just our kids that are talking to us. And, and it may be that God is using them to speak. To us. If God could use Balaam's ass, he can use some people around us to speak. Do, do you all remember that story? Balaam's ass? There was a talking donkey. God spoke to Balaam through a donkey. And if God can speak through a donkey, he could probably use some people around us. That should have been funnier than you thought. <laughs> Sometimes, how many, how many just love music? And, and uh, you love to hear the bell choir, you love to hear the choirs, and, and, and you think, oh man, that was just so great, that lifted my spirits. You know what? God uses music to talk to us. Uh, there are a variety of things that are, are kind of everyday, ordinary things, but but we miss them. Sometimes it's just that we're too busy to listen. Too busy. We don't make time to listen. And sometimes we have this paradigm or, or this thinking that, 
well, God has spoken in the past uh, that he wouldn't speak to anybody like me. So we just discount that. We don't expect that. Hearing God is a learning and maturing process. Samuel, uh, when, when Samuel uh, was called by the Lord, he, he had to learn uh, to discern God's voice, and, and Eli helped him do that. Uh, and he eventually learned a, in such a way that, that he could discern uh, God's direction uh, in, uh, in wonderful ways. Uh, he, he anointed uh, David as king over Israel because of that. Uh, you, you know, Jesse brought his sons uh, to, the, uh, to the feast and and. Samuel had been told that one of the sons of, of Jesse was going to be king, the next king, and, and he saw the first one and he thought, surely this is the king. And the Lord said, it's not him, it's not him, it's not him, it's not him. And finally, Samuel said, do you have any other sons? And they didn't, hadn't even brought David, but God knew where David was. And God was able to talk to David and Samuel about that. Um, there is a actually one of the scriptures uh, that Gary read for us that talks about us inclining our ear and uh, it says it this way in Proverbs uh, 4 20 my child pay attention to what I say listen carefully to my words in the New King James Version, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. What does it mean to incline your ear? There's a picture of it right there. To incline your ear, to lean in close, to try to get it all, to incline your ears, be intentional uh, about hearing. One of the things that I'm discovering as I get a little bit older, become a little more seasoned, <laughs> is that I've got to do this a lot more. Uh, but it's basically the idea that we are intentionally trying to listen to God through the scripture, through prayer, uh, through a variety of means. Uh, but uh, we need to incline our ears to the Lord. Uh, now, it helps to get advice from those who seem uh, to be better at hearing God's voice. That's what uh, Samuel learned from Eli. Uh, uh, he was instructed about that. I, I think uh, that if we want to grow in knowing God's voice, we need to be uh, connecting with those who have uh, developed that ability themselves, who, who seem to have uh, the ability just to discern uh, God's voice. Uh, and, and here are a couple of questions we can ask them. Uh, we could ask them, how did you begin to learn how to do this? Uh, and how does God uh, speak to you? Uh, what, uh, what makes you more sensitive to God's voice? Yeah, you know, we can ask them questions and they can tutor us in that. Here are some keys, I think, to hearing God's voice. Uh, first of all, uh, know that God speaks through a variety of means and modes. Uh, what are some of the ways that God speaks to us? Dreams. Dreams. What? Dreams. Dreams. Dreams and visions. Yeah, he did that in, in biblical times. He's still doing that. Chris? What? Uh, giving you inclinations towards certain directions. Giving you in, inclinations towards certain directions. Uh, a holy nudge. Yeah. What else? Music. Through music. We've mentioned that already. Well, what else? Silence. Silence. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> yeah. I'm inclining my ear to you, Leslie. Uh, what else? Nature, creation, the word of God. Somebody else over? Yes, Kevin. Journal. 
uh, journaling, uh, okay, uh, through other Christians, sometimes through our circumstances, open and shut doors. God speaks through a variety of means and modes. Uh, through prayer. Through our prayers, through our prayer time. Actually, well, one of the things I've learned is that if I will spend time in praise and worship, a lot of times God will speak to me during those times, and especially if I'm stuck on something and, and I, I, if I give my focus back on Jesus, uh, sometimes it, it just comes easier that way. Uh, there are a variety of modes. Now, another key is this. I think that when God speaks to us, it's often about something that's pretty practical. Uh, I remember Peter and Lord teaching on hearing God uh, when I was in college. And, and Peter and Lord just had uh, all of us at Wilmore United Methodist just be quiet. And, uh, and we hushed. And, and he said, uh, now uh, we're going to just ask the Lord to uh, speak. Uh, you ask the Lord to speak to you. And he said, some of you students will hear, you need to call your parents. <laughs> something, something practical. Uh, actually, if we've got problems and difficulties, one of the things that we can do is, Lord, how do I deal with this? Uh, God, I've got this going on. It's worrying me. It, I, it's causing me to... Uh, uh, be anxious, uh, Lord, what do I need to do about this? And I believe that when we do that, God can give us some handles uh, about how uh, to deal with the situation and the circumstance. Uh, actually, in James, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask, ask. We can do that. Um, Sometimes uh, I think that God will bring uh, somebody to mind that needs encouragement or that needs help. And, and uh, we'll, we'll just think about that person over and over again. Uh, one of the things that I found is, is that sometimes when God's wanting to connect with somebody, uh, that person will be mentioned two or three uh, times in different conversations. And, and I'll uh, finally get it and know that that's a holy nudge to uh, connect with God. The final thing that I would say uh, about, in terms of being practical about hearing God, is be expectant. Be expectant. Expect God to speak to you, whether it's through the Word, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through worship, whether it's through other believers. Be expectant. So, I've got five minutes left. <laughs> Did you say, are you sure? <laughs> well, just about. Just about. What I would like to do is um, we're going to be just quiet. We're going to ask that God would speak, that the Holy Spirit would come and that God would speak to us. And um, how many found a little card in your in your bulletin. We folded up the bulletins and uh, some of you missed Ash Wednesday and you didn't have a chance to either give up or take up. Uh, you might want to uh, pray about what you would like to give up or take up. But you can uh, ask God to speak to you and he can uh, speak to you about a variety of things. Uh, something that's on your heart. Uh, but we're going to take a couple minutes we're just going to be silent before the Lord. And uh, I'm going to ask God to speak. And it may be that God brings a scripture to mind. It may be uh, that God would bring a phrase uh, of a song to mind, a, a person to mind, uh, something that you really need to do. But uh, let's just uh, bow and I'll pray for us. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, and speak for your
your servants are blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let me ask you, and don't feel bad uh, if this wasn't the case, uh, but if, um, and actually if you bow your heads right now and close your eyes, but uh, if you felt like that God spoke to you, during the time of silence, would you just raise your hand right where you're at? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord God, we thank you that you're still a God who speaks. God, give us ears to hear what you're saying. And Lord, God, we know that when you speak, it always comes with a stretch. It always calls for faith. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would give us comfort, but then also, God, give us courage. Give us courage, God, to follow through on what you're saying to us. And Lord, for all these things, we give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to sing in the garden. If any of you have filled out a giving up or a taking up card, uh, you can bring those forward. Uh, we found that uh, in Lent, uh, if, if you give up something, sometimes it really helps you uh, break a habit uh, that you then need to break or establish a habit uh, by taking up uh, something that you need to uh, establish. Well, let's sing together in the garden.
so I'm going to be uh, up here if you need to pray about anything. I'd be uh, glad to pray with you about anything. And uh, when you receive the benediction, now may the God of grace, may the God of peace, may the God who desires relationship with each of us that is vibrant and real, may that God give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. have a great week.